y'all. Welcome to another lesson here with me, Brian. Today we're going to be going over converting mixed numbers and improper fractions. Hey everybody, welcome to Converting Between Mixed and Improper Fractions on the T6 Math Course with me, Brian. So let's get it started. Our goal for this lesson is that we will be able to convert between mixed and improper fractions. That's our big goal for today. Key in vocabulary one is improper fraction. That is a fraction whose numerator is greater than the denominator. So if we had a fraction and our denominator was say 12 and our numerator was 17, this is an improper fraction because we have a larger number up top than our denominator. What does this mean? That all improper fractions are going to be greater than one whole. That's what that means, is that the worth of that fraction is larger than one whole. Two, if we have mixed numbers, that has a mix of a whole number and a fraction. So if we looked at something like three and one half, we have three, which is our whole number, and we have this as our fraction. It's called a mixed number because it is a mix of a whole number and a fraction. The numerator, that's the number on top of a fraction, which tells you how many parts that you have. So if we looked at the fraction 3 fourths, 3 is our numerator. It tells us that we do have 3 out of 4 parts. The denominator, the number on the bottom of the fraction that tells you how many pieces are in one whole. So again, if we looked at 3 fourths, 4 is our denominator. So if we had one whole, we know that in that whole, there would be four parts, four pieces. Convert. So that means to change from one kind of a fraction into another without changing the value. So when we go back and forth between mixed numbers and improper fractions, we're not changing the value, just changing what it looks like. Key points. The fraction bar really means a division symbol. So if I have 10 fourths, that really means 10 divided by 4 which can then be used to do 10 divided by 4. To whenever we convert, the denominators always stay the same. The pieces in one whole are not going to change. So we keep the denominator the exact same. 3. When we convert, we aren't changing the values, just what the fractions look like. When we go from improper to mixed, we're going to divide the numerator by the denominator. If we have a remainder, it goes over the original denominator. So let's look what that means. We have 11 divided by 4 is 2. 2 times 4 is 8. We subtract, and we have 3 left over. So if I was going to take my mixed number, it went in two whole times. So that's my whole number two whole times. And at the end, we had three pieces left out of four, since we were making groups of four. So our mixed number would be two and three fourths. If we're going from mixed to improper, we're going to multiply the denominator by the whole number, add on the numerator, and put that over the original denominator. So for example, if I had 4 and 1 fifth. It says multiply the denominator by the whole number. So that means that we have four whole pieces that have five, or four holes that have five pieces in each. So that tells me that so far we have 20 of them. Then I add on my one left over which would make it 21. So to have 21 pieces, and how many pieces are in each hole? That's our denominator, fifths. 21 fifths. If we looked at another one, also in fifths, what this means is that we have five pieces in each hole and three holes. So we have 15 pieces. We then have two pieces left over that we add so 15 plus 2 is going to give us 17 pieces. In each of the holes, there's still 5 pieces. So it's 17 fifths. 
Why? So we may come across fractions written in both of these forms. If we are going to be able to add, subtract, multiply, or divide fractions, we have to be able to change back and forth between. So we have to know the difference. We have to know these in order for us to really understand our answers and how to even give answers the way that they need to be given. So if we looked at one and three fourths, I do want to show you what this actually means, how we can look at this. So say we have, we have one whole, and I know the, that the three fourths is going to come from another one because we have more than one. Our denominator, tells us that there's four pieces in each. So I'm going to fill in these with four. So Now this one hole tells us that one hole of these is filled in. And this three fourths tells us that we have three out of four filled in. So that's my model for one and three fourths. But I can also ask, how many fourths do I have? Well, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have seven fourths filled in, which means that one and three fourths is equivalent to seven fourths. They take up the same amount of space, but they're written two different ways. So if you need to draw a model for these, you absolutely can. We have come to our sample questions. As always, you can do them with me on your own or a mix of both. So sample question number one, we're going to convert four and two thirds into an improper fraction. So what I'm thinking, if we take four and two thirds, and I'm going to show you one more model. So we have four holes. And I know that we will have an extra for the two thirds. But the thirds tell us that each of these is split into threes. And I know that I have four holes of these that are filled in. And two thirds. What I want us to see is if I look at the total from for these, to find the total, I have four holes with three pieces each, which gives me 12 pieces are filled in. You could count one, or let's see, let's see, I could do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. But then we add these two pieces that we have here, which is equal to now 14 pieces. But 14 of what size? They're all thirds. So it would be 14 thirds. Again, if we were going to do the shortcut, instead of having to draw it out, we would do three times four, which gives us 12. Add on the two extras, which gives us 14, and we get 14 thirds. We are gonna convert 19 fourths into a mixed number. So if we look here, 19 fourths really means 19 divided by four, which then is 19 fourths, or 19 divided by four. Again, I'll show you the model after this, but let's do the shortcut of division. So 19 divided by four is going to give us four. Four times four is 16. We subtract and we get three. So we look at what is our final answer? Well, four went into 19 four whole times, and it had three out of four left over. So our answer would be four and three fourths. One thing to note, if we did this, if I do this, I know that I have one whole 
and it's split into fourths. So I start off with one hole. I'm at four pieces so far. Do I have enough? No. How do I know how many I need? Well, I need 19 of them. So I don't have enough, so I have four. Well, how many do I have now? And actually, let's keep them, let's color them in. So I have four, eight, hmm, okay, plus another four is 12. I'm not at 19 yet. Plus another four, I'm at 16. And if I know I added another four, that would be too much. So that means I need to add another hole, still make it out of four. But if I'm at 16, that's 17, 18, 19. So if I look, I have four holes colored in and I have three fourths colored in four and three fourths. Just wanted to show you why we do it, how that, why that method works so that you can think about that. Instead of having to memorize the method, you understand the method. And that means that you'll understand it for a long time. Simple question number three, turn three and seven eighths into an improper fraction. So we're just going to take three and seven eighths. The eighths tell us there's eight pieces in each of the three holes. So we're going to multiply those and get 24. We're then going to add on the extra seven pieces, which gives us 31 over eight. So 31 eighths. 20. Oh, so sample question number four. I don't know why I told you the slide number. It's a sample question number four. We're going to convert 31 fifths into a mixed number. So we see 31 fifths is really 31 divided by five, which brings us to 31 divided by five. So 31 divided by five is going to give us six. Six times five is 30. Subtract and we get one. Five went into 31 six whole times, and it had one left over out of five to make a group. So our answer is six and one fifth. Sample question five. Jesse sprinted seven tenths of a mile on Monday, nine tenths of a mile on Tuesday, and another seven tenths of a mile on Wednesday. How many miles did Jesse sprint in total? Write as a mixed number. So we know Jesse sprinted seven tenths on Monday, nine tenths on Tuesday, and another seven tenths on Wednesday. How many miles did he sprint in total? So that's first is going to tell me to add. And it wants me to write as a mixed number, which should be a good indicator that I end up with an improper fraction. So remember, when we add fractions, we add the numerators only. The denominator is still going to stay 10. So 7 plus 9 is going to give me 16, plus 7 is 23. So I end up with a total of 23 tenths. So this really means 23 divided by 10, which is 2. 2 times 10 is 20. Subtract, and we get 3 left over. So I want to get us out of just always using color coding because sometimes we may not have that option. 10 went into 23 two whole times with three out of 10 left over. So we get two and three tenths. All right, we've come to the end of another lesson. Congratulations, y'all did it. You should be very proud. And I can't wait to see you for the next one. Y'all, that was wild, but congratulations on crushing another lesson here at Nurse Hub. You should be proud and then continue working to make sure you fully understand everything that you just watched. Remember, practice is the only thing that we need to make ourselves better at all of these topics. Good luck and I hope to see you soon.